Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Friendship Force of Sacramento's um, May meeting. Uh, welcome to all of the of our Friendship Force Sacramento members, and welcome to Friendship Force Club members from other areas and other clubs around the world. And welcome to Friendship Force Sac. Uh, excuse me. Uh, welcome to the Sacramento Renaissance Society and any other visitors. So, so welcome everyone. Uh, we've got an interesting talk today exploring our area. These are day trips and short trips around Sacramento. Um, if you live here, maybe you'll see some things you haven't seen before. If you don't live here, come and visit us and we'll show you. Uh, next. Before we get started, uh, we wanted to give you a little bit of information about the Friendship Force. Uh, there may be a few of you who don't know who we are. Um, that's the organization we travel with and the organization hosting today's program. Friendship Force is a nonprofit cultural peace organization. Um, one of the slogans you can see below, a world of friends is a world of peace. And I really like that. Um, how does it do that? Well, the way Friendship Force does this is through home hosting. People travel as a group, usually 15 to 20 people traveling together. They stay in the host city with a host family. Uh, they stay about a week at a time living in the pe with people in their homes. And it's that time when you, uh, in the evening, when you're around the kitchen table, uh, that's really the best time, uh, one of the best times for me, because you can talk to them you directly face to face hear the stories, hear what their issues are, understand where they're coming from, um, and ask them some very personal questions. Um, we also host Friendship Force clubs from elsewhere, from other countries and the rest of the US. Uh, here, we about three to five times per year. Um, obviously, this, not this last year, but next year we have uh, about three planned. Um, if you want to know more information about it, then go to our website here, ffsacramento.org, um, where it'll give you a lot more information and links to other places. Um, I'd like to share with you now a little video that um, it's about three minutes long, and it'll give you a flavor for what friendship for sure is like what it feels like. So let's go ahead. It was just a week, a week visiting another country, staying with a host family, a chance to see the sights, to taste new food, to meet new people, a week of adventure. It was just a week. A week beneath someone else's roof, living with a family who volunteered to open their doors to us to share their values and beliefs, their rituals and traditions. But they did more than that. As we followed them to local landmarks, as we joined them on their daily routines, as we sat beside them over dinner, they shared more than just their culture. They shared their lives with us, and we shared the same with them. That's when we began to understand the value of what we were doing the value of a family welcoming a stranger, the value of a stranger becoming a friend. We live in a global society. Never before have more people interacted on an international scale, but as cultures and nations collide, obstacles arise. We make assumptions, we misunderstand, but what if we responded to each other with curiosity and acceptance? What if the simple bonds of friendship could be a global force for understanding and peace. That's what we're doing at Friendship Force International, building peace one friendship at a time. Founded by Wayne Smith and endorsed by President Jimmy Carter in 1977, Friendship Force International is a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting global understanding through travel. We recruit private citizens as friendship ambassadors to travel internationally, immersing themselves in local culture, 
in order to spread the message of international friendship and global peace. We've grown into a global network of Friendship Force Clubs, led by volunteers in more than 350 communities throughout 70 countries, totaling approximately 16,000 members worldwide. Visiting ambassadors spend a week or more in the home of a host, developing long-lasting relationships through a true cultural exchange that promotes friendship and international goodwill. Our members are ordinary people just like you, who travel or host in the name of global friendship. So experience different views, discover common ground, become a member of Friendship Force today and join the movement. It's just a week, a week that can change your life, a week that can change the world. This video reminded me of the very first friendship force journey I ever went on to Bogota, Colombia in 2007. My wife, PJ, and I stayed with a couple and their young daughter, Sarah. You can see them there in the lower left. Over the dinner table, we swapped stories. They speaking Spanish and broken English and us speaking English and broken Spanish. Nevertheless, we had some good conversations and, and we learned a lot. For example, one little tidbit that his ancestors were Caribbean pirates. Um, one of the many places that they took us is to the local fruiters market up there on the right, uh, where we saw many strange and wonderful fruits. Uh, well, enough about that. Let's go ahead with what we're here for. And uh, next slide, please. This shows the topics we will be covering today. Uh, Sacramento is the rectangle in red in the middle. And all of these places are within about two hours drive of Sacramento. And so we have four speakers covering about 50 minutes. Um, we'll have time for questions at the end. So uh, um, you can, and as Chris explained, you can type your questions in during the chat as we go. Um, don't worry about writing it all down. At the end, we'll share a link so you can get a copy of the notes. And now let me introduce our first speaker, uh, Kathy Hart. Next. Thank you, Ray. Next, please. Let's start out in Folsom. The powerhouse historic state park is only five minutes from my home, but I'd never stopped by. Our club was hosting a group from Australia, and this was on the itinerary, so I decided to join them. A docent gave us background on the historical significance, and we enjoyed a lovely walk through the park and along the river. I really recommend it if you haven't been to this historic park before. Right across the street is the new Johnny Cash Trail, great for hiking and cycling. Next. Historic Folsom is a place we're all familiar with, with restaurants, boutique shopping, They've got the Folsom History Museum, Pioneer Park there, but I wanted to let you know that Scott Seafood and the Willamette Winery are open in a beautiful new round brick building. They have a fairly new three-story parking garage and several new wine tasting rooms are open on Sutter Street. There's a light rail stop right at the end of Sutter Street, and they have regular events there, including a farmer's market on the weekend, Shakespeare concerts, live music, and much more. Next. Our club has a photography group, and one month we were photographing animals. So there was a small group of us that decided to go to the Folsom City Zoo Sanctuary. I was pleasantly surprised at how much the zoo had expanded in the past 15 years. I hadn't been there since my son finished his Eagle Scout project. In the same complex, you could enjoy a train ride and they have a small gallery located at 48 Natoma, right next to the fire station that has currently is showing a carousel exhibit, including photographs and mixed media. Next. Well, did you know that you can have cross-cultural experiences right here in Folsom? 
Have you ever gone to the sake brewery where they do tours and tasting? It's on Sibley Street. A couple of years ago, members from our club enjoyed an outing here, and the tour isn't very long, but the tasting was wonderful. Not only sake, but we were able to taste some marinades, some salad dressings, various things that had sake in it. The Muir House and Learning Center offers Italian language classes as well as cooking classes. I'm hoping our club schedules an event when things open up here in California. The Chinese Heritage Museum on Sutter Street is under development for a cross-cultural experience that should be open soon. Next, let's go over to Calaveras County. My first recommendation is Angel's Camp Carriage House and Museum. It's excellent. Three large buildings. When I visited, they had docents dressed up in period costume, and those docents provided wonderful detail about the exhibit. I'll talk briefly about Murphy's, some wine tasting, the caverns, and like other places, there are many, many events and festivals. Coming up this summer will be the Celtic Fair Festival mid-June. Last weekend was their Jumping Frog Jubilee, so you might have missed it this year, but you can participate next year. Next. Friendship Forest of Sacramento typically takes our visiting guests from other clubs out to Calaveras Big Trees for a short hike and to see the giant sequoias that are the world's largest trees. We enjoy a picnic lunch here as well. Next, after Big Trees State Park, we take them over to Historic Murphy's where you can enjoy a free walking tour if it's a Saturday. They've got museums. I like to stop at the Spice Tin. It's one of my favorite shops there. They have some bourbon infused smoked paprika that I can't get anywhere else. It's fabulous. They have some olive oil and balsamic vinegar tasting bars, as well as many restaurants and wine tasting places and other boutique shopping. Next. So what about the wine tasting out in Calaveras? Well, there's all kinds of handcrafted wines and unique varietals. We have 35 plus family run tasting rooms where you may get to actually talk with the winemaker. Their specialty is Spanish and Italian varietals and lots of events and festivals, including the Calaveras Vineyard Tour, which is the first weekend in the month, June through September of this year. Next, we like to take our guests out to Ironstone Vineyards. It's just a beautiful venue. You do need reservations required for the tour and tasting, but they have a lovely little free heritage museum. It's small, but the highlight there is this large crystalline gold leaf specimen. It's about two feet tall and you really do want to see it if you're out there. They host concerts in their outdoor amphitheater. Lots of fun. Next, California Cavern State Historic Landmark was originally called Mammoth Cave. It is California's first show cave in the longest cavern system in our state. You can take a guided cavern walk anywhere from 45 to 80 minutes and see some of the beautiful crystalline cave formations. Next, Modesto, food and flowers. Members from our club made a day trip to several of these stops in early December 2019. First, we stopped at Schiabata's California Olive Oil, which is in Modesto. They've been making olive oil for 85 years. Their production manager is very knowledgeable and gave us an hour overview of the process, which included a wonderful tasting. Hillmar Cheese Company is in Hillmar. It's just a few minutes away. That was our next stop. And a staff member gave us a brief tour through their display of dairy farming in the area. There we have a small cafe where we enjoyed our lunch. And our third stop was at Duarte Nursery, which is about 10 minutes away in Houston. Really, it's a must see during late November, early December. They have literally hundreds of thousands of poinsettias that are grown in their nursery, every color you can imagine. It's an incredible place to visit. 
Another stop in the area might be an 1883 mansion or the Great Valley Museum is located on the campus of the Modesto Junior College. Next, a cross-cultural experience in Stockton is the Cambodian Buddhist temple. Visitors are welcome during the day. You just drive right in and park. It's a big open area. You get out, it's free. You can walk around. They have over 90 of these incredible statues celebrating the life and story of the Cambodian Buddha. Next, the San Joaquin Museum is in Lodi and you, you can see they've got 12 modern and historic buildings handicrafts in the photos there, covered wagon, different household furnishings from the settlers and agricultural innovations. Next, the Lodi region boasts over 750 growers that harvest more than 100 types of grapes. There are about 85 boutique wineries and 70 tasting rooms. Wine isn't your thing, you can stop by the Lodi Japanese Garden and historic downtown where they have shops, restaurants, and where you can sample gourmet cheese from around the world at Cheese Central. Weekly events happen in Lodi, typically Friday through Sunday, centered around music and wine, including the Lodi Grape Festival, which is mid-September of this year. Next, I'd like to introduce Helen Flock, who will be sharing information about the East Bay area. Welcome everybody. Um, next slide. Next slide. Thank, oh, okay. Um, welcome everybody. This is a little map of the East Bay and I'm going to direct you to a few locations here, all within about two hours of Sacramento. Next, the, uh, in Oakland, California, about two hours from here. Next, uh, you can visit the Kaiser Center Roof Garden. Uh, the Roof Garden is in an office building. Uh, you can go in the office building at Kaiser Center and just tell them you're going to the garden and they'll let you up the elevator. It includes a large reflecting pool with small fountains, a wooden bridge, undulating lawns, a path system, benches, and an extensive variety of plants, including 42 mature trees, shrubs, ground, ground covers, etc. Next, uh, on the waterfront in uh, Oakland, you can visit the floating White House, USS Potomac was the yacht used by uh, President Franklin Roosevelt during his administration. Uh, tours of the ship and sailings will resume in September of 2021. In the next, next, in the radio room, you can, uh, next please. This is uh, uh, um, FDR's stateroom, next. And in the radio room, you can hear a recording of a fireside chat that he gave from the ship in 1941. And there's a tourist who just had to sit in FDR's chair, you know. Next. Jack London Square is a great place to stop for lunch. Next. It has um, stores, restaurants, hotels, an Amtrak station, a San Francisco Bay ferry dock, and next, it has um, Jack London's favorite watering hole, though we don't know if he took in much water, uh, but the first, Heingold's first and last chance saloon uh, was the first and last chance to drink alcohol before a long voyage. The saloon was the inspiration for scenes from London's novels, Call of the Wild and the Sea Wolf. Uh, next. Next to the uh, saloon is the relocated cabin where Jack London lived in the Klondike. Next, the gardens of Lake Merritt uh, include a rhododendron garden, a sensory garden, a bay friendly garden. Next, a Japanese garden, a bonsai garden, 
a varia garden that's uh, tropical rhododendrons, which is a specialty there. Uh, it was also the nation's very first wildlife refuge. Next. When you go into the uh, gates of the Japanese garden, next, you can find, besides the garden itself, next, uh, the bonsai garden, where you will find volunteers working to uh, uh, keep and prune the bonsai there. And this is like no bonsais I've ever seen before. Very interesting. And the volunteers are usually eager to uh, answer your questions and uh, tell you about the art of bonsai. Next. Across the street from Lake Merritt, is the Cathedral of Christ the Light. Uh, this was the, this is the seat of the Bishop of Oakland. And it was the first cathedral built entirely in the 21st century. Next, the projected image on the inside represents the story of the loaves and fishes and the uh, cathedral itself resembles uh, the overturned hull of a ship. Next. In another part of Oakland, you can go to Preservation Park. It uh, occupies two blocks in downtown Oakland, and in it are 16 Victorian houses next that um, uh, are particularly well preserved. And although next they are private homes, uh, you're welcome to wander the neighborhoods and admire these houses from the outside. Next. The Oakland Museum of California is an outstanding museum. And next, it includes uh, the Dorothea Lange Digital Archive of pictures of the uh, Great Depression, uh, galleries of California art, California history, uh, California natural sciences, and some special exhibits right now include Black Power, Feminism, Afrofuturism, whatever that is, and Edith Heath Ceramics. Next. Um, the Dunsmuir House and Gardens in Oakland has a neoclassical revival architectural size. It's on the U.S. Register of Historic Places. It was built in 1899. Next. The 37 room mansion is 16,000 square feet and has 10 fireplaces, a Tiffany style dome, wood paneled public rooms and inlaid parquet floors. The servant quarters alone accommodate 12 live-in staff. Next. A visit to Mountain View Cemetery is like a trip back in time. It's like shaking hands with railroad builder, Charles Crocker or admiring the brushwork of Yosemite landscape painter, Thomas Hill, and hearing architect Julia Morgan, who is also buried there, uh, tell about her designs for Hearst Castle. Uh, the cemetery was designed by Fre Frederick Law Olmsted, who also designed New York's Central Park, and it offers spectacular vistas of San Francisco Bay's surrounding areas and is an impressive repository of local and state history. There are docent led tours that begin at 9 a.m. on the second and fourth Saturdays of each month for about two hours. Next. In the Walnut Creek area, I'll talk about several locations. Next. The Ruth Bancroft Garden is three and a half acres. acres. Uh, it features largely succulents and other drought tolerant plants from around the world. Next. The garden's founder, Ruth Bancroft, lived to be 109, and she was a pioneer in drought tolerant gardening, which is important in California. Open to the public year round, the garden showcases fabulous blooms during every season. Next. Another garden in the uh, Walnut Creek area is the gardens at Heather Farm. They're a free public garden, and they have next a rose garden, a sensory garden, a rock and salvia garden, a children's garden, a waterfall garden, a shade garden, a camellia garden, a climate change garden, 
native plant garden, butterfly garden, riparian garden, and Daffodil Hill. Next. The Borges Ranch open space uh, uh, preserves a ranch that was established in 1899 and is a good example of an early 20th century California cattle ranch. Uh, the, um, uh, the ranch contains barns, corrals, outbuildings, next, a blacksmith shop, antique farm equipment, and uh, farm animals, and the associated land is a great place to hike. Next. The uh, Diablo foothills are valued for their striking geologic formations, their sweeping panoramas of the San Francisco Bay region, and the rural quality of the adjacent rolling grasslands. They're also home to peregrine falcons. The East Bay Regional Parks offer, offer many hiking opportunities. Next. Um, nearby, the Howe Homestead Park preserves a 1930s ranch and is the entry point to hikes, both short hikes, which I have done, and you can hike from here all the way to the crest of Mount Diablo, 10 miles away, if you like. Next, the Benicia Historical Museum. Uh, their exhibits are housed in the 1850s original Benicia Arsenal buildings. It has exhibits on Benicia's history, including the native Patwins of Solano County, the founding of Benicia in California, the gold rush, the Benicia Arsenal, manufacturing, the camel experiment that didn't work out that well, and the arts. Next. The Benicia Capital State Historic Park is the site of California's third seat of government right before Sacramento became the capital. It is the only pre-Sacramento capital that survives. The original building has been restored with reconstructed period furnishings and exhibits, and there are docents there to explain to you about the formation of the state capital. Next. Next door to the uh, Benicia capital uh, is the Fisher Hanlon House. It dates from the 1800s, and it is also open for tours and owned by the California Park Service. Next, at the John Moore National Historic Site, you can tour John Moore's home and grave site and its associated orchards and grounds. And you can also hike on Mount Wanda's 326 acres of oak woods and grasslands. Now, Deborah's going to tell us what there is to see in Reno. Hi, I'm Deborah Schaefer. Um, I am a member of the Sacramento Friendship Force, and um, although I live in Reno, and I'm going to show you a few things to see and explore in Reno. Next. Next. Reno's classic red arch located downtown was recently changed to blue. Although there were some grumblings about the color change, it turned out to be just stunning. Next. Reno is a true outdoor person's dream. Virginia Lake is a very popular lake for walking, picnics, and enjoying the wildlife. The walk around the lake is approximately one mile, which keeps regulars coming back for the exercise as well as its beauty. Next. Fountains, art, and benches are plentiful at this popular lake. Next. And the wildlife can be so adorable. Virginia Lake is a must-see in Reno. Next. The Wilbur D. May Arboretum is a beautiful and relaxing garden of walkways and pathways. It incorporates beautiful rose gardens and all types of plants. The Arboretum also hosts many outdoor events during the summer. One of our streets and a neighborhood in Reno is also named Double Diamond. If you invert the W and M, from Wilbur and May until they cross each other, you can see how the rancher's brand of the double diamond was created from Wilbur D. May's name. Next. Of course, these pictures were taken before spring. The Arboretum is much more beautiful in summer when all of its beauty is in bloom. Next.
The signage leads you on pathways and different plant species are noted by ground stakes along the paths. Next. The Wilbur D. May Arbor, Wilbur D. May Museum is a history museum featuring the antiques and collectibles of, collectibles of Mr. May, who was a rancher, artist, pilot, soldier, heir to the May department store chain, world traveler, and a very famous philanthropist in Reno. This museum is located just next door and is a wonderful ending to your leisurely time in the Arboretum. Next. Artwork on display is diverse. Next. And focuses on collections from more than 40 trips Mr. May made around the world. Next. There is lots to see. Next. And of course includes a gift shop. Next. The National Bowling Stadium and Museum is located in Reno, and an international bowling tournament was recently held here, along with national big league tournaments, which are sponsored here as well. The big dome is supposed to symbolize a large bowling ball. Many movie scenes are shot here. Next. Reno's National Auto Museum is sure to delight, and for all of the women thinking they wouldn't be interested, it is beautiful and fascinating for both men and women. Displays change quarterly, and it has been noted that Jay Leno, who is a car enthusiast, often visits. Next. Spectacular cars are showcased. Next. My photo of the painting on the inside hood and the back of this car does not do justice to this roadster. Next. Another showcased car from years gone by. Next. And this is the mascot model for the museum. Hop in and have your picture taken. Next. You will be sure to find a favorite as you stroll the streets. Next. Part of the new neon line includes sculptures from Burning Man and the lighted old neon signs, which are being installed along 4th Street in downtown Reno. Next. Some of these sculptures are larger than life. Next. Start at West Street and 4th Street and travel on down Fourth Street to see them all on the neon line. Next. The beautiful river walk highlights the Truckee River, which is the only river that flows from Lake, Lake Tahoe, to Lake, Lake Pyramid, without any other outlet at its end. During the summer, flower baskets hang on the sidewalk lantern lights. Shops, pubs, and restaurants are abundant. Next. The river has an abundance of beautiful views. Next. The Truckee River is a popular place you can wade in the waters or just relax and watch the river flow. During the summer, there are canoe races and a fun annual fundraiser for a local pediatric development center is usually held on July 1st. Crowds gather when hundreds of purchased numbered Rubber ducks are released and flown down the river as people hope their duck finishes first to win the prize. And the entire month of July is called Art Town. Free concerts and events take place all month. Next. Riverside restaurants are always favorites with the locals. Next. Near the city center at Park Center, you will find the stained glass Space Whale sculpture, which was lent to the city for one year, but now has become a permanent piece of art in Reno. Next. Reno is also the proud home of the University of Nevada, which would take a whole day in itself to explore. Next. Reno is also becoming well known for its murals, 
tucked here and there throughout the downtown area. <clears throat> they often cover the whole sides of buildings like this one, or just brighten electrical stations. It's fun to look at to look for these beauties while exploring Reno. Next. There's a couple more. Next. This mural was recently added to the side of the SPCA thrift store. Next. Murals are murals are everywhere. Next. More murals. Next. And more murals. Next. The murals are artistic in so many different ways. Next. Another place to find unexpected art is at the interstate off ramps. These metal works add a delightful pop to the rustic Nevada culture. Next. After being canceled last year, the balloon raises on again this year, September 10th through the 12th. But you must be a real early bird to catch the best part, the glow show, which starts at 5 a.m. Next. The glow show takes place in the dark of the early hours and it's a true highlight. Next. And when the sun is up, they all take off. For tickets and parking information, go to their website. Next. Another great art museum is the Nevada Museum of Art. This is a fine art museum. Themes and artists change regularly. Next. And of course, there are the casinos. Beyond the gambling, many have shows, comedians, and live band music. Some of the best restaurants are also located inside the casinos. Next. Hot August Nights is an annual event held in Reno and Virginia City. This year, during the days of August 2nd through the 7th, the event is mostly focused upon classic vehicles manufactured before the 1970s and is based on rock and roll as well. The term Hot August Nights got its name from the weather being hot as it generally is in the month of August, of course. Next. Hot rods of all shapes, ages, and colors are often seen roaming the streets days in advance of the big event. Next. Also, be on the lookout for wild horses. They really do exist. The Sacramento Friendship Horse Club has been discussing a future overnight trip, staying in one of the hotel casinos and taking in the Reno sites. Next. And I'd like to introduce Marty McNew, and she's going to discuss the Sacramento area gardens. Hi, I'm going to do an in-depth look at two local gardens. The first one is the UC Davis Arboretum and Public Garden. Um, this spans the uh, entire UC Davis campus. It in includes 27 individual gardens, groves, and collections. Next. And here is a map of the of the Arboretum and Gardens. And as you can see from, if you go from the upper right down to the bottom left is the way we'll be progressing through this park. Uh, it's three and a half miles along Puda Creek. Next. So uh, one of the gateways is through this arch of shovels, which I think is very imaginative. One of the first gardens that you come to is the Australian garden. And there's a photo in the upper right of some of the vegetation that you see. All the gardens follow the creek. Next. The next garden that you would come to or grove is a redwood grove. And this is definitely one of the uh, gems of this um, garden. Uh, throughout the gardens, you will see informative signs. This particular one says, where can I go to see old growth redwood forest? And there's a map and information about how you can go investigate further. The next garden, next, the next garden that you come to is a native California garden. And without uh, <clears throat> California poppies, it wouldn't be a native California garden. And so 
Here's an example of some California poppies that you will see next. Um, these are just some views along the, the creek. There are bridges and flowering trees, lots of beautiful scenery, and even some wildlife. Next. And along the way, you'll come to the Mediterranean collection, which uh, this gives you a, a sample of the walkway. Um, it's usually very, very busy and very populated all during the week and especially, especially on weekends. Next. Um, there's also a lot of artwork. This particular uh, one is one of my favorites in Nature Gallery Court. Um, it has ceramic of, of ceramic pictures of the flowers and plants that you can see in the Arboretum. And then a, I love the whimsical uh, bugs and butterflies and so on that are around the corners. Next. Then the next garden that you come to is the white garden. And this is really a beautiful garden. Um, it's amazing how many flowers uh, have white blossoms and here they're show showcased. There's also a beautiful gazebo with lots of seating where you can sit and enjoy the bees and the flowers. Next. One of the goals of the Arboretum is to showcase plants that can be grown in our area. And, and the public gardens have numerous plants. They also have these great signs so that if you see something you like, you know what it is and you can go to look for it. Next, these are some more views in the garden. And as you can see, there is plenty of seating uh, to enjoy the garden. Lots of different plants. Next. And the last grove is the oak grove, where over 100 species of oak trees from around the world are planted. Again, uh, there's lots of seating. Uh, it's a wonderful place to go on a hot day because of all the shade that's provided. And again, there's many uh, informative signs along the way. This one in, talks about white oak trees and all the different uses that have been made of, with them over the years. Next. And more artwork. Underneath each grove of oak trees, there is a informative sign that tells uh, the name, the common name and the scientific name of each oak species. And uh, in an innovative way, they show the bark, the leaf, and the acorn of the tree, because each, each oak tree has a different, um, the, the leaves and the acorns of each oak species are different. Um, uh, but I love this, these art, these art, um, artworks. Um, I, I just think it's a lot of fun. The, the large picture in the middle is what they've done to the side of the restroom. Again, innovative way to make use of space. Next. Um, these are just some views of some of the wildlife that you will see. There's also mural in an underpass that you, you walk through and uh, a lock bridge. Next. Um, and then the ar it is an arboretum and it has a teaching nursery and there are teams of staff, students and volunteers that grow plants. And as you can see, uh, there's an online plant sale going on now through tomorrow. So you can order your plants and then um, come out and pick them up. Next. Our, our next park that we're looking at is the Capitol Park. Uh, it surrounds our state capital. It's 40 acres and it spans 12 city blocks. It contains species from all over the world. Uh, and it features uh, many state and national champion trees and includes many monuments and memorials. Next, here's, some, um, here's a view of the Capitol from the um, west side, looking toward the, the Capitol. Next. Uh, here's a bird's eye view of the park. So we start on the left over on 9th Street and that photo that you saw was taken uh, around that fountain, uh, <clears throat> looking toward the Capitol. And then we will um, follow the park through to 15th Street where there are many um, 
features that we'll, I'll be talking about. Next. Whoops, back one, yeah. Um, there are many monuments in the park. Uh, this, I have three examples here. One is the USS California, the bell from the USS California, which was the only dreadnought type battleship that was built on the Pacific coast. And it's no longer in service, but we have the ship's bell. Uh, <clears throat> the middle monument is part of the peace officers memorial. Every year there is a ceremony when the names are added, unfortunately, to the wall of, of police officers who have lost their lives during the year. Um, and then the final one is the firefighters memorial. This one is uh, in, in, interesting because the, the figure on the bottom that's reaching up is a woman, which is unusual to see a woman in a firefighter's memorial um, statue. There also is a wall nearby where all the um, names of firefighters that have lost their lives uh, is uh, memorialized. Next. This is just a view of what you can see in the springtime, lots of azaleas, dogwood, and other flowering bushes and trees. Next, more uh, views of the park. On the left is the Spanish War Veterans Memorial uh, in a Japanese park, Japanese garden that was given to uh, the state. And behind it are trees from the Civil War Grove. There are trees from all the sites of major Civil War battles in the park. Um, just in the middle is just some uh, blooming, uh, blooming uh, plant. And then on the right is a statue of Thomas Starr King. This statue, uh, if you look closely, you can see it says California on the bottom. This statue stood in statutory hall in our nation's capital for over a hundred years and a few years ago was recently replaced by Ronald Reagan and so we brought it to the Capitol Park and and now it it's here today. Thomas Starr King was an important orator during the time of the Civil War and he's credited with keeping California in the Union uh, because of his oratorical skills. Next just some more vistas of the park, uh, a, a little garden, uh, one, of the <clears throat> one of the major trees. And then just to show you some of the uses that the garden is put to, this particular young woman is celebrating her quinceanera and comes here for pictures. A quinceanera is a 15th birthday celebration in the, um, many of the Latin countries. Um, <clears throat> you, can, you come on a weekend and you will see uh, lots of photographs of different people being taken for their major events in their lives. Next. At the end of the park, we come to the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. This uh, memorializes the 5,822 Californians that lost their lives or were missing in action uh, during the Vietnam uh, conflict. Uh, it, I, I, there's so many, symbolisms that are in this monument. I, I really enjoy it going to it, even though it's a, a memorial to a war. Um, the young man seated on, sitting on the right is reading a letter from home. If you look in his left hand, he's holding a letter. And if you go, actually go to see this, uh, you can actually read. Um, all of the statues here are modeled on real people. Um, Around the side of the monument are the names of all the people that died, and, and the insert in the in the bottom shows how they're they're listed by city. And actually, this one shows uh, two young men, Daryl Keene and Vincent Locatelli, that were classmates of mine uh, in high school. Um, next, next to the. Vietnam Memorial is the World Peace Rose Garden. And this photo is taken recently. It's, it's just an explosion of blooms right now. It's just a beautiful, beautiful garden. Um, and interspersed, interspersed throughout the roses are plaques with poems written by local school children. And this is an example of one uh, where they've written a poem about peace. Um, 
and you can see there's a gazebo off in the right, um, which is used for weddings and so on. Excuse <clears throat> next. And these are just more views of the Rose Garden. Uh, this was a wedding that I attended a few years ago. And um, it's just a beautiful place. Lots of beautiful roses. Next. And finally, we have a cactus garden and a California native plant section. Again, more California poppies. We can't have a native plant garden without California poppies. And uh, some beautiful cacti. Um, next. And that's the end. This is a view looking back toward the east side of the Capitol. And you can see the double dome uh, structure of the, uh, uh, of the building. And then we have we're leaving the park along with three of our highway patrolmen who regularly patrol on their beautiful Palomino horses. And that is all I have. And so now we're going back to Ray, who will take questions from all of you. Yeah. Thank you, Marty. And thank you, uh, our other speakers. These are just a few of some of the highlights. We tried to get some things that we don't usually go to. Um, there are a lot more. I've got a big collection of them. And so these are, I'm surprised that after, with that such a big collection to find all these other places I'd never heard of. So um, I've been to some of them, but not a lot. So lots of things. I was looking for the chat. I see a few comments. I don't see any questions there. So let me open it up to everyone. Uh, if you can un unmute everyone, then... If you have a question, uh, we'll direct it to the right speaker. Yeah, Any we can. Uh, I think, Gray, if they um, use the reactions button, that helps. They can raise their hand yep. or uh, let's start with that. Oh, OK. So are there any questions or comments? I'm not seeing any hands raised. So if someone wants to. Oh, there's one here. Who's this? Um, that's from Janice. Janice. Yes. yes. This is the first time I've, I've uh, been to a Friendship Force on, online. I'm in Renaissance. Um, I was just wondering about the Rose Garden in the Capitol. What's the best time to go see it? Is it like on a weekend? And where do you park in the um, Capitol garage? I mean, not... The I can't think of the garage that you can park at that if you go to. Um, um, uh, I can answer that. This is Marty. Um, sure. On, if you go on a Sunday, which is when I like to go, parking's free on the street. And um, mm -hmm. we, if you park down by 15th Street, you, you'll probably find uh, open parking. Uh, there is a garage on um, 10th Street. Right. Um, and that's the one that you use, you know, for the capital. It's a, a city garage and uh, you access it uh, at 10th and L. Mm, thank you. Uh, yeah, Mary Ellen. Right now the, the roses are just spectacular. Mary Ellen has her hand up. You want to go ahead? Yeah, I just uh, want to thank uh, uh, all of the speakers for an incredible array. For one thing, there were so many places I didn't know of, but I did want to suggest a place in the East Bay if you have not been to Ardenwood Historic Farm in Fremont, California. It's 270 acres of organic farming. Um, and so they have a historic house. They have a, a horse drawn railroad uh, they do railroad history there including the preservation of um carter railroads which are the trolleys from san francisco they're open tuesday through saturday and it's another place that you can definitely spend an entire day at uh and they do incredible living history programs as well so uh, i used to volunteer there and they do everything from if you were talking about the railroad they might have uh, Chinese workers or black workers actually do productions or even plays about uh, what was going on. So I just wanted to add that to the list. Hey, Mary Martin, Ellen, could you throw that in the chat for us? I so sure will. Could see it. And Pat Fitzgerald had her hand up. You want to go ahead, Pat? You can You're muted. No, you can unmute yourself, Pat. Uh, she's still okay. Muted. There you go. Okay. Am I on? Okay. My question was, these are sound all interesting places to go. Is there any way that we can organize a tour 
to see some of these places as Friendship Force members here in, in Sacramento. Mm, yeah, we're always looking for good ideas. So if you have some ideas on top of your list, uh, let me know. Maybe we can get some interest and get, a, get somebody to organize it and we'll have a little outing. Well, I, I would think any of the ones that's been presented uh, that we I haven't seen all the Reno exhibits, nor have I seen a lot of the ones around Oakland. I've I've been to Woodside, which is in the Bay Area and different places, but there's a lot of them that I haven't seen before. I've seen most of the Calaveras County um, exhibits or places to go, but there is a few that are of interest. So. Yeah. Well, we're going to try and put something together, I think, in the future. I think we might start with Reno and see where we go from there. And speaking of Reno, there was a question in the chat, Deborah, about um, is there a walking tour of the Reno murals? Um, no, not that I'm aware of, because they're just sporadic around the city. Uh, it, um, you'd have to have a good pair of walking shoes <laughs> and you'd be out all day. I think um, Kathy Hart did a web search and saw that there's one yeah. for $55. That seems a little pricey, but. Um, it, it must include transportation because that is pricey. Yeah. So I don't yeah. think it's a walking tour. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's probably it. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, I'm sure that the murals that I took photo, uh, photos of, are not all of them because they're they're just kind of everywhere. Yeah. Um, so someday I might take that that uh, trip and see <laughs> see where they're all at. But uh, okay. Well, Donna Fong had a, a question. Donna, go ahead, Donna. Unmute Thank yourself. You. There yeah. You Hi. Oh, no, I just wanted to say that there was a parking garage, and maybe someone can help me exactly where it's at. Around 17th Street is a state of California parking garage. After four o'clock, it's only two dollars, mm -hmm. so it's kind of near, near down near the Capitol. And also on weekends, I think it's two dollars as well. And I think it's on um, seven. Yeah, it's on 17th Street. I was looking it up right now. Yeah, I think it's on 17th between Capitol yeah. L and M. I think. It's across the street from Pyology. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's in, you know, it's in Midtown, so it's kind yeah. of you can walk to the Capitol easily. Yeah, there is some good apps too that Sacramento has for checking on parking that I've used. So um, lo look for those apps. Um, Morton had a question. Morton, you want to um, go ahead? It's, it's Morton and Marilyn from oh, Niagara, Canada. Hello. And, uh, we uh, visited uh, Friendship Force Reno, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago. Does it not exist anymore? Friendship uh, Force Reno? No, no. Um, Reno is closed down for oh. um, lack of participants, um, which is why I joined Sacramento. Um, so, uh, but um, I've been with the Sacramento group for a couple of years now. So um, hopefully we're going to really have some exciting plans um, coming up here. Um, but no, unfortunately, the Reno group did not make it. Mm. So Mary Ellen did put in the chat about the Ardenwood Historic Farm, if anybody uh, wants to see that. If you don't remember how to do it, just put your cursor down at the bottom where it says chat and click on that. And you can actually, um, there's uh, three little dots, the more dots. When you click on that, you can push the button save chat, S-A-V-E, save chat. And when you close out the session, that sat chat will be saved to your computer and you can go back later and look up the notes. So if you don't know how else to copy and paste, that's an easy way. Just chat and then three little more buttons and then save chat. I'm going to go ahead and put in the chat also um, the um, information about the uh, link to our PDF that has the notes from today's presentation. Uh, that uh, PDF will have all of the, the actual web links and um, information about each of the sites that the presenters have talked about. And uh, as it was mentioned, we are gonna email that to everyone afterwards uh, when we get the video processed. We'll send you links to both those. I'm um, not seeing any other hands raised right at the moment or any other questions in the chat. Was anyone um, else? Uh, Chris, uh -huh. I just did find online that there's a map of all the murals in Reno and 
it says it is a kind of a walking tour. It says, join us first Saturday at 10 o'clock a.m. for a docent led tour. Um, you got to have your walking shoes on, but tickets are $10 per person hmm. um, and leave from uh, the city plaza where there's the Believe sculpture. Um, right. And so there, anyway, there's a, it's arts, oh, art from- spot, Reno, at gmail.com. Can you throw that into the chat? Maybe put that in the chat too. Yeah, Deborah, if you don't mind. And then Deborah, I expect you to take that. And then next time we come up to Reno, you're going to show us all the (laughs) I will. I will. Okay. No, but it's it's it looks like there's a lot of walking. (laughs) Yeah, that's okay with me. I like to walk. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or Well, I just wanted to share that we are talking, our club is talking about for our members doing a walking tour of the murals in downtown or midtown Sacramento Mm -hmm. um, this fall. And if we don't, or maybe in addition to that walking tour, we have also talked about doing a tour of the Art Deco downtown. So we have a docent that would be available to do that for our members or we might do a mural walking tour so we we have some things pat patty fitzgerald um we just weren't sure you know how quickly will things open up here in california so um we are talking about doing an overnight though to reno we just started talking about this um, probably next year i think it'll be next year Okay, sounds good. So um, if there are no other questions, Ray, did you want to share our upcoming yes. event? Yes, let I do. Bring that back up and we'll let you do that. Yeah, Kathy already mentioned the one in our November. This is our deco tour or murals. We maybe do both um, depending on the weather and how we feel and so forth. Uh, in the meantime, next month we have a presentation uh, about this group called My Sister's House about volunteering, uh, very worthwhile, a sheltering organization and what they do and how we can help. Uh, Then in July, we have some speakers, two speakers, one of which is a member of our club, and the other one I hope to become a member of our club, uh, who who actually hiked this trail 500 miles worth, and they're going to tell us about their journeys. Then in August, Peace Corps, uh, September, Oktoberfest, I hope outdoors. So we're, we haven't planned much on that yet. We're working on it. And then October, they have the call Dead um, Talk about, that, uh, you know, November, what, November 2nd, I guess, at the Dia de la Morte. Um, so anyways, we've got things coming up. So stick around, check our website, um, sign up.